Alan Vikas, what about the strategy involving rain tires versus slicks? As Hal Unser Jr., by yes. the way, moves to the inside, tries to get alongside Gordon, but can't do it. Go ahead, Jan. Well, we checked with Emerson Fittipaldi's crew, and they're leaving it up to Emerson, just like Derek was saying. The responsibility does lie on the driver. They feel we'll have heavy rain here, but only for a brief moment. They're willing to put on the rain tires and then go back to the slicks. They feel that will still play okay into the fuel mileage versus pit window. So they're ready here with the rain tires. They'll be Emerson's choice, and just like you said, it'll be experience that makes the difference here. But ultimately, the driver's choice. Bobby Gordon's battle through an area that continues to see sprinkles broken off for the moment and his fight with Mario Andretti as they work their way around Scott Brayton. But now, Bozell is even there. closer closing yes. from Bozell closing on Al Unser Jr. And take a look at this. This is Brayton's car. The middle of this fight shows you how much water is truly out there. Well, it is raining now in the infield section. Brayton moves out of the way. That was Al Unser Jr. that went by with Robbie Gordon. But it is raining on these infield corners and uh, Tracy, yes it is Tracy that's makes the first one to make a pit stop. So Paul Tracy makes a move down toward the pit area. A change for rain tires, Jan Vikas. Paul Tracy was the first to go for rain tires. Now we know that he has had some contact with walls and off course excursions. Paul Tracy is definitely one driver that does not want to take a chance on slipping off the road. 11.2 seconds, he's underway. Again, his speed is okay. Paul Tracy taking a chance because if it stops raining, those tires will burn up, Paul. They're laid out for Emerson Fittipaldi as well as we look at Bozell continuing his fight with Robbie Gordon. Now Hunter Jr. was able to get around Gordon. And they continue to fight these cars on slick tires in this, the wet section of the course, what they call the festival curves. And then leading in third, second, fourth, uh, third, fourth, fifth corner of this track. Now we'll see who's quickest. Al Jr. is on hot slicks and Tracy is on wet weather tires. Oh, Fabi is off the road. Teo Fabi apparently drove it off the course as rain is coming down even harder now. And I would imagine that the rest of the field very shortly will make a decision to move over to the rain tires. And you can see Al Jr. on the slicks has managed to pass Paul Tracy, but the decision will have to be made very soon. You can see it's dry here, but in that infield section, it will be very difficult on those slick tires if it's raining hard. And as with the small shower, thunder shower moving through the area, the wind over on the front straight has begun to pick up. In fact, some of the raindrops coming by almost horizontally here now on the front straightaway as the rain becomes a little more generalized. But as yet, only Paul Tracy has made the decision. You can see now the rain coming down fairly hard in some sections of the courts. Raul Boisel has opted to head into the pits for rain tires. How soon will Fittipaldi make his move? I would guess he'd make it almost any time now. Well, Paul Tracy may get a big advantage here being the first man to stop because if it rains hard, he will have the advantage and Fittipaldi will run slowly on the rainy surface, but he still elects not to come into the pit lane. Fittipaldi stays out. Mansell is in second place. He is well back, though, from Fittipaldi. And for the time being, Mansell also decides to stay out. I wonder if Fittipaldi might be keen off of what Mansell does. I don't know, but Al Jr. has just made a pit stop. He's on wet weather tires, and Fittipaldi on hot slicks still has, has enough grip to fly by him. So Fittipaldi obviously believes at the moment the gamble is worth taking that he should stay out, even though it's in unusual conditions. Look at the rain now in our camera lens. So Fittipaldi continues to stay out on these slick tires. Of course, he is a master in the rain, and for the moment, he is willing to take the opportunity to stay on the slicks. you got to look at a substantial difference in times there between his fastest lap and his last lap. Here comes Mario Andretti. Harold is waiting for him. Indeed, Paul. We have been here at Pit Out, and we've seen 10 cars go by with the wet tires. Mario now will be the 11th as they put the treaded tires on. Then St. James just goes by with the rain. So now half of the field are on rain tires. It continues to rain. The wind continues to blow here at the pit end as we go to Jan Bikas now further along Pit Road. We are standing by just behind you, Gary, as Emerson comes in just as Danny Sullivan goes out. Emerson rolls it in right on the marks. It was his call. As we talked about from the booth, he waited a little longer than anyone else. He wanted to see if maybe these clouds were going to go over, and he might get lucky, and it would dry up. All the tires are on. Very quick stop. 10.9 seconds. The reason is, Paul, not as much fuel had to come in. They can make quicker stops. So as Fittipaldi comes out, 
well ahead of him, Mansell came by. Mansell is still on dry tires. Most of the field now has moved over to Slicks. Ride with Nigel Mansell and tell me, do you think it's raining out there? Well, now, what is Mansell going to do? He's the only big correction there under acceleration. You can see it's still raining. Our, our camera lens tries to clear that water away as much as possible. I'm not sure he can stay out here much longer in these type of conditions when he knows stay out here much longer in these type of conditions when he knows everybody that he's, that he's racing against, primarily the Penske's, are already on wet weather tires. In fact, let's keep an eye on him because the indications are looking. It's dry over here on the back side of the course, at least certainly not raining as hard as it was on the front side, but the indication is that Mansell team will call him in and he will change over as look at there Guerrero. as Guerrero straight off the course right behind Mansell at the time Guerrero Mansell the next to stay out now it's obviously very very slippery because we saw Guerrero turn left at the end of the straight and he never made the right hand turn went straight off the road and clouded that outside barrier very very hard Update on Nigel Mansell, Gary. Just as in the other situations, Paul, it is Nigel Mansell as the driver who makes the call. The crew thought certainly he would be in on the last lap. They had the tires over the wall. They were ready. Mansell, however, says, I'm going to gamble and go for at least another lap. And now it's not raining as hard here at pit out in the Mansell pit as it was just two, three minutes ago. Plus, the wind is blowing briskly head on down the front straightaway here. So if it stops raining, it could also dry very quickly. Well, one of the reasons Mansa would even bother to take a gamble here is he knows in the dry conditions, head to head, he can't beat Emerson Fittipaldi, I don't believe. So he is going to take a gamble that hopefully it will stop raining. Everybody on wet tires will have to make another stop. But if he can hang on, he will have a big advantage. But I'm not sure how long he can hang on. We see the, the uh, tow truck head off out to try and collect Roberto Guerrero's car. 49 laps, the 102 laps scheduled distance are complete. The first pit stop's done by everybody, then an extra pit stop for most. Now look here, Roberto Guerrero, now watch him. We were focused on Mansell, and then Guerrero was suddenly gone. Never he just makes came straight it. off the corner, head on into the barrier, though fortunately it looks like a fairly light tap. We will wait for IndyCar's official word on the condition of Roberto Guerrero, but it looks like he should have been able to climb out of that car without any trouble whatsoever. So some changes here in the Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200, and Mansell is back on top. Back at the Budweiser G.I. Joe's 200, Nigel Mansell still on slick tires, has still opted not to come into the pits, tiptoes his way around the rest of the field and continues to lead. He is now 8.23 seconds ahead of second place Emerson Fittipaldi. But Fittipaldi has been closing down. Fittipaldi was 12 seconds behind just a few laps ago. Here are the lap leaders in this race thus far. Of course, back to Nigel Mansell at the front of the field. Okay, Nigel says the gamble is too much. Emerson, he knows, is on wet and he's closing in on him much faster than he's, than he's comfortable with. So the gamble is too much. He's got to go for wet tires. Gary Gerald watches as Nigel Mansell pulls in. And as he comes down pit road and the crew awaits him, it rains harder now at this end of the pits than it has at any time. So he pushed it as far as he could. He was in the minority of those who hadn't gone to the wet tires. Now he makes that sacrifice. Still waiting to come off the jacks. Not a fast stop. Problems at the left rear. Now he's down. Still not away. 17.8 seconds, Paul. So Mansell makes his stop. There's another car, the number one car of Bobby Rahal, who runs now in third, and he is still on his dry tires. Look at also, crazy. Ari Leyendijk is still on dry tires, but there's an indication of the difference of adhesion. As Paul Tracy comes past Rahal, he does have range. Well, I mean, Mansell now, having realized the gamble was too much, you'd probably see Bobby Rahal now head for the pit lane, too, because he was probably going with the same reasons as Mansell was that this car is not quick enough but he can get a better result by going with the gamble however it looks like it's too much because this rain is not letting up in fact it's getting worse of course with only an eight second interval Fittipaldi moved into the lead as Mansell moved in for his rain tires and look at Ray Hall as now he uses even more of the circuit still on the dry tires we'll keep an eye on Ray Hall 
Ray Hall struggled here all weekend, only qualified 15. I asked him, do you think this is a good or a bad car? He said, all they need is test mileage. He has not had a single test day with this car. Look at, he twitches sideways. He's not had a test day with this car since he replaced his RHO1 chassis at Milwaukee. Test time is all he says he needs to make this faster. Ray Hall continues to stay out, perhaps encouraged by the fact that he's able to stay in contact with second place Paul Tracy, despite the fact that Tracy is on his wet tires. Well, looking at our lap times here, there is only one mile an hour difference between the lap times of Tracy and Ray Hall. That is not a big difference. I'm surprised that Ray Hall on slicks has that amount of grip to even be able to keep Paul Tracy in sight. But look at this here. This is becoming a monsoon. Yeah, but remember that Ray Hall won in very heavy rain at the Meadowlands in 1989. Jan Vigas? Well, Paul, according to Bernie Marcus, who is Ray Hall's engineer, he says, hey, 